even though the 2024 NFL draft is now over, there are still some holes left on the commander's roster left by GM Adam Peters. So let's fill some of those holes today. Pause on today's edition of the commander's report where I have my ideal commander's free agency plan. I've got four players that are still available on the open market that I think Adam Peters and Dan Quinn can bring in to make this roster better heading into the 2024 season. Before we get into it, the Cowboys report just keeps losing to us. We, we, we've beaten them in the like battle the last three weeks. It's not happening and they're just And they're just, they just want more, guys. They wa they've come back for more. This week, they did put up their best number yet, though, at over 1,400 likes. Go. So let's try to get to 1,500 likes on today's video, guys. So let's, let's make it a full sweep here. Last four weeks, we have beaten the Cowboys report. Let's do it again. Cowboys fan Jeffrey Cooperstein, we appreciate you producer, producing this video today, my friend, but you're going down again. You guys stole our coach. You stole like 10 of our players. You're just trying to be the Cowboys, but you will never be the Cowboys. So good luck with that one. Well, I can't wait for Jaden Daniels to be stomping on the grave of the Dallas Cowboys when they stink the next decade yeah, we'll and the Commanders that, dominate Chief. the division. Make sure you click that thumbs up icon if you haven't already. And without further ado, let's get in to my perfect free agency plan. Now, I'll put it in quotation marks because it is subjective here. But listen, man, the Commanders have over $43 million to spend for the 2024 season in terms of their cap space. Right? They got plenty of room to work with to add some quality pieces to this roster. And there's no reason why GM Adam Peters and head coach Dan Quinn can't bring in some pretty high-quality players here on one-year contracts. And listen, man, if you're going to be like, oh, we can't bring them in, it's a one-year contract. It's a one-year contract, guys. It's, it's just one year of commitment. It's not like you're committing to these players for three to four years. If they don't work out, they simply hit the open market anyway, and you get that extra funds for your 2025 season and offseason. So without further ado here, let's make this commander's roster better, starting with my number one target, for the Washington Commanders this year, and that is Stefan Gilmore, who is, for some reason, is still available on the open market. Now, it could be because he's asking for too much money. It could be to see to kind of gauge his interest after, uh, you know, the NFL draft to see if the market kind of, uh, uh, you know, heats up a little bit. But plain and simply, guys, Stefan Gilmore is still a really, really good player. Last year, with Dan Quinn and Joe Witt Jr. there with the Dallas Cowboys, 13 pass breakups, two interceptions, and a forced fumble. Uh, had a really good pro football focus grade, and he's, ha he's actually played really well, and he has stayed relatively healthy the last two years, uh, going back with the Cowboys last year and then the Colts in 2022. Another good season there where he put up another two interceptions. And you look at the pro football focus grades throughout Gilmore's career. It's looked pretty darn good, man, throughout his career. But you look at these last three years with the Cowboys, the Colts, and the Panthers, respectively. It's among the highest pro football focus grades of his career outside of that stretch in 2018 and 2019 where he was arguably the best corner in the National Football League. So, yes, he is getting older. Yes, he has had a couple of injuries. But, yes, he has played really good football, and he is still available. And guess what? If you sign him to a one-year contract worth $8 million – uh, he would be your instantly your number one cornerback. I mean, instantly. I mean, I know that we want to believe in Emmanuel Forbes here, and I still have optimism and hope for his future. But at this point, you're kind of trusting that he is going to be your number one corner heading into year two when he was burnt toast last year, and that's about it. So this would definitely give you a nice safety blanket at your number one cornerback spot. Plus, speaking of Emmanuel Forbes, Gilmore would be an excellent mentor. Not only has he been in the league for many years, he's been one of the best cornerbacks in the National Football League for many years, but he's also played in this system that Dan Quinn and Joe Witt Jr. are going to be bringing defensively to the nation's capital. So I can't think of a better mentor for Emmanuel Forbes, who's trying to really uh, assert himself as a legit number one corner, at least just a starting level corner in this league. I think that this move would help the commanders out in a number of ways, and if you can get him for $8 to $10 million on a one-year contract, it is an absolute no-brainer to me if I am Adam Peters, the commander's GM. And it would actually give you a little bit of the similar value that Bobby Wagner brings to the locker room. He'd be a leader, he'd be a mentor, and he would set the tone for this Dan Quinn era here in Washington. So let me know down there in the comments section, should the Washington commanders sign Stefan Gilmore an NFL free agency. Give me a yes or give me a no for today's pinned comment. YouTube's going to throw you an ad break here in just a couple of seconds. When that happens, take advantage of that time by giving me a yes or no. Another player that I would bring in here is Carl Lawson, the defensive end 
formerly with the New York Jets and the Cincinnati Bengals, respectively. Now listen, man, Lawson has definitely had a rough go of it in terms of injuries uh, over the last uh, three seasons or so. Last year spent uh, much of the season injured on the bench, what, what have you, and then in 2021 he completely missed that season. But you look back at his time with the Bengals, and he was actually a pretty darn good player. And you look at that 2022 season with the Jets where he was fully healthy, he had seven sacks. And I know that the commanders could use some nice sack production with their current group of defensive linemen. And honestly, guys, when I look at kind of the, the room right now where you got Cleveland Furl and you got Dante Fowler Jr. and K.J. Henry, and yeah, you're probably hoping one of those guys, you know, kind of, you know, comes up and is a legit starter in the league, Carl Lawson would be one of your two best edge rushers on your roster on day one, the second that you sign him. Yes, I know that he's dealt with injuries, but he's extremely athletic. He's pretty darn good against the run, and he would be a pretty darn good stopgap there as your number two or even number one edge rusher right away on the other side of Dorrance Armstrong on the defensive line. Now, coming up here, I got two signings along the offensive line that I would make to kind of, you know, ensure and kind of, uh, you know, sure up this offensive line that definitely still has question marks on it heading into the 2024 season. But before I get into that, get your officially licensed Jaden Daniels Commander's jersey from our friends at Fanatics before they all sell out. Because let me tell you guys right now, these things are selling like hotcakes. Of course, he's the brand new franchise quarterback. Just so you guys know, it's going to be most likely number five whenever the, the number is officially announced and they do all these different things. Right now on the Fanatics website, it does have a number one on the jersey, but that's just because uh, they haven't been able to update that picture yet. So whenever they do eventually uh, announce his number, whatever the case may be, it will be that official number, okay? So you can get that for in your closet right now by going to chatsports.com slash Daniels to get your official Jaden Daniels commander's jersey in your closet today. So I would go out and get David Bakhtiari. Now, I know what you're saying at home. Jack, Bakhtiari is always hurt. You can't rely on him to be in the lineup. And listen, man, pretty much you're, you're pretty much right about that, okay? He's always hurt. However, when he's on the field, he's one of the best left tackles still in the National Football League. You look at the pro football focus grades over the last decade of his career, never had one, never had a grade below 70, and he hasn't had one pretty much below 75 since, his, since 2014. So it's been a long time since he's even been an average left tackle in the league. He's always been super solid when he's on the field, both as a pass protector and a run blocker. And yes, you are playing a little bit of a risk here with the injury stuff and all this different stuff. But listen, man, when he's on the field, he's excellent. And if he gets hurt, you just go to Brandon Coleman. You just go to Cornelius Lucas, and you're in the same exact spot that you're at right now. Now, I'm not saying, you know, that you have to sign him to a three-year contract. Sign him to a one-year deal. And, you know, you have really nothing to lose except, uh, you know, really putting Jaden Daniels in jeopardy if you don't get somebody solid at the left tackle spot. Now, I'm not sure if Bakhtiari will want to come to the Washington Commanders, and you can actually probably lump Stephon Gilmore into this uh, category as well. Do these guys that are kind of on the tail ends of their career want to try to win now? Do they really want to come to a rebuild type situation here in Washington? Maybe not, but again, this is why this is the ideal version of the offseason plan, and Bakhtiari is the best option on the market. But hey, if he doesn't want to come to the Washington Commanders, I think Donovan Smith, somebody that has won two Super Bowls in the last half decade as a starting left tackle in this league, would consider coming to the Washington Commanders, especially if it means he can still be a starter heading into the 2024 season. I think that he's pr relatively solid. I think he's probably a little bit below average in terms of starting left tackles, but you're hoping Brandon Coleman is the future at that position. You give Smith a one-year contract. I think that'd be a good stopgap while Coleman uh, tries to develop here in his rookie season. Then when it comes to the interior, I want to get somebody that has a little bit of versatility. So let's get Andrus Pete. Uh, somebody that has played guard, somebody that has played tackle on both sides in the National Football League. He's going to be relatively cheap, uh, and I think that he's somebody that you can bring in, and you can just put him wherever you need him to play. If he beats out Andrew Wiley in camp, who was awful 
uh, last season with the Commanders and actually wasn't very good the year previous with the Kansas City Chiefs at right tackle, you can put Pete at right tackle, all right? Or if Andrew Wiley actually shows his worth in camp and he, he shows that he's worthy of that relatively large uh, cap figure he's going to be making this year and he's starting at right tackle, you can probably plug Andrews Pete in in front of Nick Allegretti. Or if Nick Allegretti beats him out, Andrews Pete's a really good swing option both at guard and at tackle for you to use. And you know that the guys on your roster right now and the starting five is going to be the best it can possibly be to protect Jaden Daniels in his first season as a pro, which is going to be absolutely critical for his development. Okay, now it's your turn. Let me know down there in the comments section, which move would you like to see the Washington Commanders make this offseason? It can be signing someone in free agency. It could be cutting a player. It could be trading for a player. Let me know what you guys think down there in the comments section. What's one move Adam Peters should make? That'll be it for today's show, guys. I really do appreciate all of your support. Make sure you click that subscribe button if you haven't already because we got a bunch of great Commanders content coming your way for free later in the week.